Hi, Matt Cawthorn here. I wanted to walk you through very quickly some highlights of how this iRule Vim editor thing is, is put together. So the Vim iRuler, I think, is what, what we're calling it. So um, just very quickly, this is a, an, a Vim RC. I mean, the, the user is iRule, is the, you can see here, my home directory is the user iRule. And this is the .vimrc file from that home directory. And this is where you can start to get a feel for how it's all put together. And if you scroll down, the, the original author has a bunch of comments, and I added a bunch. And, and uh, we, this file, frankly, needs a bunch of cleanup. But in the spirit of a beta, I wanted to get this out. So um, you're going to see that the most important thing is this pyfunk file in, in relative to home directory inside iRule. This pyfunk file is where all of the Python functions are defined. And, and this is actually a vim file where we're executing Python code because we've compiled Python into our Vim. Here's how to check, by the way. If I do, if I'm from command mode, if I do pi or Python, boom, I see hello Vim. And so I know I'm running Python, which is kind of nice. So I can execute Python code from, Pyth from Vim, which is, which is neat. So anything that we define in this file will get executed. And you'll, you'll see the, how to set it up here in a second. Um, the next most important thing, just really quickly, you can see where the syntax highlighting um, definitions are. And most importantly, the, the dictionary for the syntax file. And this, again, needs some work. you know, But I, I got a basic version of this together, and it seemed OK to me at the time. Um, we're going to iterate through it and get it better over time. If you make improvements, please forward it back to us at Dev Central. So here's where we're defining custom Vim commands. And there's only a few. And you can see, here's the save command, here's the list, here's the get. Um, so it's, it's, all very, it's all very straightforward. And there's a new one I added just uh, in the last code cycle here called new. So you can edit a new file from an, an existing session, a new iControl file. So this is where we do it. This is where we pass our arguments. And then what they do is these commands map to Vim functions. These aren't Python functions. These are actually Vim functions. And so we're going to go look at what those Vim functions are doing to execute the Python code. OK, here we are in the pyfunction file, pyfunk.vim. This version number is wrong. I need to update that. And if you, if you see here, sorry, let me go up a little bit. OK, um, this is some global stuff. And if you see, all we're doing is we're, we're telling Vim, hey, execute Python and do it in this here file. And we're, we're defining a here file with the delimiters, EOF. Very, if Linux folks will be, this is a very, very familiar sort of uh, idiom. And it's executing the code inside the here file delimiters. That's it. And so if you make a function like connect here, connect, what we can do is execute Python code. So when the when the Vim function connect gets um, gets executed with the argument with the single argument host, we then drop in and start to run all this Python code. And that's it. That's literally how it works, the whole thing. So for every function, I set up some globals and for every function I just write a little snippet of, of Python code here that Vim executes. Um, and notice here too that we're you can run Vim commands right from inside of the Python execution with the Vim module. You just import Vim and you can run commands, uh, Vim commands. It's really, really cool stuff. So they did an excellent job designing this whole system. So, um, And again, you can see how we're publishing and, and all that kind of stuff. It's all in this file. I'm not going to go too, too in depth on it. But to add some functionality, for example, just uh, the last code cycle here, I added a new function called new rule. And I just added this little snippet of Python code here. That's it. So I'm calling the enu to edit a new file command. And then I'm setting the file type so it'll hook the syntax highlighting library. And then I'm just toggling this rule, uh, this variable, Python variable, to true. So we're going to use the create call instead of the modify call in iControl. It's that simple. So anyhow, I hope that's of use. And I hope that that maybe piques your interest into adding some, some functionality to this. And if you do, all we ask is that you send it back to Dev Central. Thank you very much, and we'll talk to you next time.